temperature makes a huge difference in how long our food is going to stay good. For example, this can of oats says storage life estimated to be 30 years when stored at 75 degrees or below. Now what happens when I store that at 93 degrees in my garage? And today we have food scientist Joseph Bell who's going to explain the science behind the changes and help us understand exactly the best way to store food for the longest shelf life. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen, and we are thrilled because we have food scientist Joseph Bell back with us. We are so grateful for his knowledge and his wisdom and his other videos that he's done with us have been very successful because he's cleared up a lot of things about food storage that people talk about, but sometimes they just don't know what they're talking about. And so Joe's been great at helping us to clear up all the mystery behind it. And so for today's video, um, he's going to focus on how temperature affects the storage of food. In the scientific world, we obviously measure temperature mostly in Celsius. So when products are aging, uh, there's a lot of physical changes, a lot of chemical changes that are taking place while they're changing. And the speed at which those things happen varies with every product. There are literally dozens of different chemical reactions that are happening when a product, while a product is aging. When we run a shelf life study in the food industry, we'll plot um, the concentration of some component versus time, and we'll be analyzing the rate of that chemical reaction. And the, the rate of that reaction will come from the slope of the line, if you will, uh, the slope of that graph. The slope is, is the same thing as a rate constant. So for a given chemical reaction, you've got a rate constant. We routinely measure the temperature, the, the, the chemistry, the stability of products at a range of temperatures. Our control temperature, the room temperature, varies with different companies. The companies that I worked for um, use 23 degrees Celsius, which is um, uh, 73 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the control temperature. If you increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, which is 18 degrees Fahrenheit, that'll give you a different, a given slope of the line. When you compare the rate of a given reaction at control versus 10 degrees Celsius away from that control, that gives what's called a Q10 value. In other words, the, the comparison uh, across t uh, 10 degrees Celsius. That Q10 value gives, us, gives you a factor on the effect of temperature on, that, on those chemical reactions. The factor, is, and the thing to remember here, is for every 10 degrees Celsius or also saying 18 degrees Fahrenheit, the factor is two to three. So let's say I just bought a, 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 can, a case or two or three of, of some product, we'll call it wheat, and somebody tells me it's got a 20 year shelf life. Okay, so the manufacturer has measured the uh, stability of the product, how much it changes over time, and they've, estimated that it'll it's still good after 20 years but at, at 20 years is the end of shelf life and manufacturers usually want to make that shelf life as long as they can but they do have an endpoint when when it when it's expiring so okay so i take this pro these pro cans this wheat i take bring it home and i go stick it in my garage um, we happen to be having this conversation in August, and in my garage, it's easily over 90 degrees. The 10 degrees Celsius above control, well, control is 23 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees over is 33 degrees Celsius. 33 degrees is about uh, 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I've got a product that uh, I've been told it's got a 20-year shelf life at room to at room temperature at 23 degrees Celsius. At 91, the factors were two to three, which means now the shelf life is somewhere between a half and a third of control. Which means now instead of being 20 years, 
it's now somewhere between six and a half years to 10 years at best because it's been stored high, at a higher temperature and that chemistry has been happening more rapidly than it would have done at room temperature. That's the bad news. The good news is the same thing happens if you put it into a cooler environment. So instead of 23 degrees Celsius, I put it into 13 degrees Celsius, which is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, again, the factors are two to three. So if it had a 20-year shelf life times two, it's now 40 to 60 years shelf life. If you've got it at 55 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 73 degrees Fahrenheit. That's actually why we use refrigerators. You put your, your, your food into a refrigerator, you're assuming that, that it's going to be more stable there. And the, chem, the chemical reactions that happen at room temperature, those reactions, same reactions are going to happen in the refrigerator, but slower. So this is really important because we interact with our audience and, and some of those folks live in very hot climates and they don't have a lot of storage space. So their food is sometimes in a garage that you just mentioned that's 90 or 100 or 110 degrees. And it really does make a significant difference then. So the, the thing to remember is for every 10 degrees Celsius, which is the same as 18 degrees Fahrenheit, increase in temperature, the shelf life goes down by a factor of two to three. So in other words, it's between a half and a third as long. It's, it's significant and it's not the end of the world. Just plan for it. And it's not something you're going to stop. Uh, it's just things age. Like you and I, when we <laughs> get older, um, we don't change a whole lot from today versus tomorrow. If I'm having a very stressful day, I might age a little more than I would normally. So your product is sitting out in the garage on a given day. It may feel like it's aged by two to three days instead of one day. So people are going to ask, all right, so I've got this stuff in my garage. What do I do with it? So the question is, how, how long did you expect it to last? Now consider what has your product been through? Has it been stressed a lot by temperature? Or has it been a really bad winter and your temp your refrigerator was your refrigerator, your garage was was really cool. That's or cold. That's a good thing if that happens. But if it was hot, then the product is aging more rapidly. People ask, can I keep my stuff? All you can do is start by doing the math. If you if it has exceeded shelf life, open a container, test it. Now, when you've opened it, you might as well eat it because it's now opened. The only way you can really test to see is has it exceeded shelf life is by tasting it and, and checking it out. Recognize the the, the mo most likely scenario is, for example, in wheat, it loses its B vitamins. They they disappear on, on schedule. So if you're you're eating wheat and it's uh, you're dependent on it for your B vitamins, take a B vitamin supplement to go with it. Okay, so now we understand that heat is really bad and cold is really good. What about temperature fluctuations? Same story. You and I have good days and bad days. And you're giving your product good days and bad days. And they're going to age accordingly. It's impossible to say how it is doing, just like it's impossible to say how you and I are doing, really, on aging. The only thing you can do is do a checkup, take, go to the doctor for yourself, uh, find out how are you, can you pass the stress test and versus your product, check it out, taste it. If you open it, it's opened. It's no longer going to be uh, free of uh, oxygen, for example, uh, if it's in a vac vacuum sealed container the chemistry is now going to change and it's going to start reacting with the oxygen. You can find out if it's still palatable. You may well have to replace it. Thank you so much, Joe. Is there anything so, else you want to tell us about temperature? Well, I, I was just going to say, that this leads me to a couple of conclusions. If you're going to store it warm, 
you need to rotate it more quickly. And that's, I think you alluded to that a little bit. Yes. Or you need to get more creative, understanding that this food degrades much faster and find creative spaces inside your home where you're keeping it at, you know, 70 to 80 degrees instead of uh, 90 to 110 degrees. And, and we have some videos on, you know, getting creative. So maybe you want to take a look at those videos or on your own, find creative ways to get this into a better environment. The basement is a great place. One of the things that Jonathan had done, um, and I'll leave a link for this video, but um, we had to cool our garage. And so he's got this fan system where he turns the fans on at night to replace the warm air with cool air. And then he's got this little window unit air conditioner in there. And we did it so that our freeze dryers wouldn't overheat. But quite frankly, you could use that if that's the only option you have. It is a way to create some cooler storage space. So just be aware that if you're putting it in your basement and there's a furnace down there, to put it next to the furnace, you haven't accomplished your objective. So, you know, okay. also, obviously, I'm sure you've talked about in your videos, having a space between your product and the wall or the product and the floor, just so you have airflow, so you don't have rusty cans developing or whatever. Uh, in the dry humidity like we have in the West, it's not a big deal. Um, we raised our family in Pennsylvania and we had a lot of humidity. So it's more, impo more important to get the airflow around them there. Those right. are the issues to deal with. Yeah, great, great information. So thank you so much, Joe. We just really appreciate you taking time and sharing your knowledge with us. And to, for the question of the day today, we want to know what other questions you have for our food scientist, Joseph Bell, so that we can have him come back and enlighten all of us on the right way to store food so that we can be healthy during challenging times. Thanks for all of you for being part of the solution.